Hi, real estate agents and all those in social media land. This is Dawn Connors. So today we're going to talk about gifts. Before we get started, please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love that. And if you click the bell, that will give you notifications each time I put out a video. And I generally put them out on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So today's topic is gifts. If you are fortunate enough to get a gift to help you, you can use that for any source that you want. You and your client, your client can. So down payment, closing cost, prepaid items, anything in pertaining to the, even paying down your debt, anything pertaining to the, your home purchase. So if you're going to get a gift and you're fortunate enough to get a gift, there's a couple things that you should know about it. The first thing is your gift is received by a family member or somebody that has a family relationship to you. So what does that mean? What's a family relationship? Uh, maybe you had a child together, or perhaps you lived together. The thing about a family relationship is it's a little dicey and you have to be able to prove that relationship. If you're a family member, it can be a sister, brother, parent, aunt, uncle, grandparent, they can, husband, wife, they can all be ones that give you a gift. So in the second part of this, the gift um, has to be documented by either transfer, a cashier's check, or they can write you a personal check. And that money gets deposited into your account. The common denominator on all of this information is the money gets deposited into your account, preferably two weeks before closing, because all your money has to be documented for your closing about two weeks before the closing. So your donor has to prove that the money, you have to prove that the money came from your donor, from that recipient, from that family member. And so you prove it by having their bank statement, a transaction history will work, or a letter from their bank saying that they had this uh, average balance in their accounts over the last 60 days. It is probably a great idea to speak with your donor beforehand to make sure that they know what is going to be needed for that and make sure that they're willing. Because sometimes donors have, um, they don't want to disclose private and personal information like their bank accounts. And so they have to be willing to submit to us directly is fine, that transaction history, a bank statement, or in some cases, a canceled check if they write a personal check. So that's the documentation that's needed. Uh, we are so grateful for you and your business and working with uh, a donor. It's a blessing to be able to get down payment assistance and help for, from them. And the key, the third thing that you should know is that a gift form is completed. It's a standardized form that will get to you or that your lender will get to you. And it, it, on it, it has information on uh, the donor's name and their relationship to you and that it is not a loan because for your down payment and, and or closing costs, you cannot have borrowed funds, non-secured borrowed funds. So that means that that gift cannot be borrowed. You cannot have to pay it back. If you do have to pay it back, it we you have to sign that standardized form that says that it's a gift and it's not required. So, um, so you have to be ready to be willing to sign that standardized form, you and the donor, to receive the money into your bank accounts about two weeks before closing, and to supply proof of the sometimes proof of the relationship. So that's what you need to know in regards to gifts for you and your and your clients. This is Don Connors at Mortgage One. I service six different states. It's so good to be with you this new year. I hope you are doing fabulous and I look forward to meeting all of your mortgage needs and answering any questions that you have. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.